All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take a look at our next set of notes. Not strictly module four, it's going to be a little bit of a combination of things, but we are reviewing module four, so we'll go ahead and label it that way. We got another 4-0, we're going to do some problem solving practice. Okay. Now, for our first, probably the only problem we'll have time for tonight, for our first problem, pizza, party, panic. Let's take a look at the word problem. Now, a copy of this is included on Google Classroom. You can see the exact image I'm about to show you. Also, nice thing is, you have this exact same problem as part of your CASP practice test. So if you started that, you may have come across this already. Now, for this particular problem, which again, there is a copy of it on Google Classroom, so please take a look. Four students plan to share the cost for ordering pizza. Each student says how much of a whole pizza they want to eat, what fraction of a whole pizza they want to eat. Abe wants to eat one half of a pizza. Becca wants to eat two thirds of a pizza. Cam wants to eat two fourths of a pizza. And Kim wants to eat two sixths of a pizza. Now, not only do they have very specific needs as far as the amount of pizza, they have a specific need for topping. Abe and Becca only want pepperoni, Cam and Kim only want cheese, and we must be ordering from Costco because cheese and pepperoni pizzas can only be ordered as a whole pizza. No ordering half cheese, half pepperoni. So what is the minimum number of whole pizzas they must order so that each student has as much of the kind of pizza they say they want to eat? Okay, there's a lot going on here, so we need to break this up piece by piece. What I am going to suggest for step one, and just like most things in math, there are different ways to do this, but the way that I start my word problems, what I would suggest you start with, record what you know. Record what you know. Let's start by just writing down what we know. We know that Abe I'm going to go ahead and put Abe's name. Abe, come on, Abe wants one half a pizza, one half a pizza, and specifically half a pepperoni pizza. We'll just go ahead and put one half pepperoni. Becca, Becca wants two thirds. And if I look at the word problem, she also wants pepperoni. Okay, so it makes sense that the two of them will be sharing. So I'm already kind of thinking about that. Now, once I've got them written down, Cam, A, B, C, I see what you did there. Cam, wants two-fourths. Now, the problem says two-fourths, and I can write that. I'm looking at two-fourths, and I'm thinking, why don't I simplify that? That's just half a pizza. Two-fourths of a pizza is half. Now, Cam wants cheese. And conveniently enough, Kim and I feel like that should start with a D. It should have been like Donna or something. Kim wants cheese pizza too, but specifically she wants two sixths of a cheese. Kim, you know that you have to simplify your fractions. Two sixths, divide the top and the bottom by two, I get one third. So one third of a cheese pizza. So now what I have to do is basically combine these fractions to figure out how much pepperoni pizza I need, combine these to figure out how much cheese pizza I need. So step two, we're going to choose operation or possibly operations and write 
an, that should be an a, an expression. So we'll choose operations. We will write an expression. That's a little better. Now, I already said combine, and many of you may already be thinking, well, if I need half a pepperoni pizza and two-thirds of a pepperoni pizza, then I am probably going to be adding one-half plus two-thirds. Again, this should give me the amount of pepperoni that I need. On the flip side, if I add half a pizza for Cam to one-third of a pizza for Kim, that should give me the amount of cheese I need. Now this is what I meant about it not super fitting in with module four. We're going to be doing some addition here. Module four was multiplication and division. But that's okay. That's okay. We still spent a lot of time problem solving. So I'm going to zoom in there a little bit, make sure we got all this. Okay. So we've chosen operations. We're going to add. And we have written an expression. Actually, I guess we wrote two expressions. One half plus two thirds. So, step three, let's solve. Whoops, there we go. Step three, let's solve. One half plus two thirds. And actually, sorry folks, I'm gonna spread this out a little bit. Sometimes I like to write the fraction small, so I'm not wasting a bunch of paper, but it is important to show our work and be able to see everything. So I'm going to spread that out a little bit. Let's do one half. There we go. I feel like the fractions can breathe now. One half plus two thirds. Now my denominators are different. I cannot add them yet. So I am going to have to come up with some common denominator. If I had left the, well, actually, these were the same. I'll get to that in a minute. Sorry. Let's look at 2 and 3. The least common multiple for these, the least common denominator, would be 6. Remember, you can list out the multiples for each number. You can skip count by each number. 2, 4, 6. 8, 10, 3, 6. As soon as you hit something that's the same, there's your common denominator. Okay, 2 times 3 gives me 6, so 1 times 3 gives me 3. 3 times 2 would make 6. Do the same thing on the top that I did on the bottom. 2 times 2, there's 4. Okay, 3 6 plus 4 sixths equals seven sixths. Now some of you may be recognizing we have more work to do here. We don't want to leave an improper fraction, so I'll go ahead and rewrite it as a mixed number. We're going to get one whole out of there and then one sixth. Some of you may still be recognizing there's more to do. We'll deal with that in a few minutes. Okay. I'm going to put a little squiggly partition line. There's our pepperoni. Let's deal with our cheese. Let's take care of the queso. One half. Because again, Cam wanted two-fourths of the pizza. That's one half, buddy. Plus Kim's two-sixths. Well, that's one-third. <sighs> Different denominators. But... We already know the least common multiple for 3 and 2 is going to be 6. We did that already. 1 half, we did that already. We know that's going to be 3 sixths. And the kooky thing is, Kim's pizza was originally out of sixths. So maybe Kim knew something that I didn't. 1 third is 2 sixths. I guess simplifying that didn't help us too terribly much. All right, we now finally have something we can combine. Three sixths plus two sixths would be five 
sixths. Don't need to simplify, it's already in simplest form. We're in good shape. Okay, so now that we have solved, we've done our calculations, step four, check to be sure you answer the entire question. Now, check to make sure, check to be sure you answer the entire question, the whole thing. Let me explain what I mean by that. I'm going to slide this up a little bit. Okay. If we look at the original question, it says, what is the minimum number of whole pizzas they must order so that each student has as much as they say they want? What is the minimum number of whole pizzas? Well, the calculations I did told me that we needed one and one-sixth of a pepperoni. I can't order one-sixth of a pizza. I can't order it by the slice. So I have to round this up to make sure I buy enough. I have to go up to the next whole pizza. We are actually going to buy two pepperoni pizzas. Now, will we have pizza left over? Yes, we will. But that's better than letting poor Abe or Becca go hungry. So we need to purchase two pepperoni pizzas. Could we order three and still cover Abe and Becca? Yes. Could I order 16 and still cover Abe and Becca? Oh, yeah. But the problem wants the minimum number of pizzas. The smallest number of pizzas we can order while still making sure Abe and Becca get the pepperoni they want. That's going to be two. Now, we have something very similar with our cheese pizzas. Really, we only have enough demand for five-sixths of a cheese pizza. I cannot order five-sixths of a cheese pizza. I cannot call up and say, hey, make me a pizza, but that last slice, just dump it. They're not going to do that. They're going to make you pay for one whole pizza. Will there be extra left over? Yes, and that's okay. But you have to make sure that you buy at least one whole pizza. All right. That's it. Check to be sure you answer the entire question. Let's add this little bit in. Make sure you record your answer. Now, when you're taking a computer test, it might not let you go on until you've recorded, so that's a little easier. But we still want to be very careful to make sure that we recognize that as a part of the process. I also always recommend that you box your answers up on your scratch paper, on your graph paper. That way, if you or your teacher needs to go back and look at it, it's not too hard to do. Got some eraser shavings there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that'll be it for tonight. Once again, hopefully you know this by now, but the original problem is posted on Google Classroom if you need to look at it there. I'll put it here, too, if you want to pause and take one more look at it on this screen. All right, if you have any questions, bring them to class. I will see you next time. Thanks, folks.